Behind me, you will see my grandfather's office, where he composed the columns that uh, you've read over the past few years on my site. Um, thought I'd show you the actual place they originate from. Follow me. About the window. And then the monitor. I regret that I was never able to film him uh, on this camera for any of you, but uh, I'm hoping that I can present a little bit of the man behind the columns through the words of those who knew him best, his family. We would stay at the house um, and uh, provided an absolutely lavish three-course meal. It was amazing and uh, incredibly hospitable. I remember uh, Peter dropped us off back at Sherborne Station afterwards. His driving was... Uh, he drove uh, in the way, the way that I imagine he used to fly. He really drove quite fast through these little country lanes. He was very much in, he was the master of the, of the roads. So I remember, and yes, he, he took us back to the station, saw us to the platform and just uh, grabbed me by the shoulders. So I was about 19 at the time. He gave me a giant kiss in the middle of the face. I don't know, I don't know. It just felt so incredibly accepted and, and, and sort of loved by, by them both through the first time, the first time that I met them. And... <laughs> cool. Well, in the context of Bell, Obviously, being Asian, there was a lot of tension anyway because obviously she's supposed to have an arranged marriage. Mm. So, to, to bring a half an hour discussion into one minute, we went from telling them we're going to get married to them saying to Belle, Look, you dump him or else, uh. to, Well, okay, we'll have a full seat wedding, to, No, that's not acceptable, so we'll get married in a registry office. Well, no, we can do that at a hotel now, it'll be a little bit nicer. And there was 19 of us there, is that right? Um, and what was. And throughout, throughout, the, throughout the service, to give it some context as well, <laughs> Bell, <laughs> Belle's mum was in tears, so we are there doing our vows and she's crying in the background. So there's all that going on. But what was fantastic and also had a big impact, I think, on Belle's immediate family was the fact that uh, Granny and Grampy were really keen to, to, to wear traditional Sikh clothing. So Granny wore silver kameez and, um, and I asked, we asked Grampy to read from Khalil Gibran. Um, and I think he really liked the fact that it did mention God. And define Khalil Gibran? Um, it was, which passage was it from his, it's from the Prophet, his, his ah. book, The Prophet, okay. talking about when he talks about, there's a passage where he talks about love, mm -hmm. which is a very powerful sort of thing that we, we were both kind of into a little bit at the time. Um, and it's a really power, it was really powerful, and for us, it talked about love between two people, elements of spirituality, and it, it did mention God, not in the traditional Christian sense, but talked about God, and I think Grampy did like the fact that he had to, it mentioned the word God three times, and the, the woman who was Registrar. officiating, Registrar, Registrar yeah. was obviously pretty appalled, and the end said, you do realise I should not have allowed this to continue, you mentioned God three times. At 86, <laughs> you still had that capacity to scream, oh look! Sorry, Duke. <laughs> so that's a distraction. I, I think to you still have that capacity too. <laughs> <laughs> to scream with joy, even at 86, because you know, he still had a, a child in him, even at eight, and I think everybody should have. And I'm always extremely suspicious of anybody who hasn't. <laughs> I know you have. Uh, his extraordinary interest in post morteming every card game he played. Such that when you want to hurry away, having forgotten about your drastic loss, <laughs> he being the winner, he would prefer to go back to the first trick played and in fact re-examine the miss discard that you uh, indulged in in the first or second round. And then he'd consider what happened at some later stage of the game, which also swung the game entirely in his favour. <laughs> that, that, that's one. When I was growing up, I felt ignored by him, largely. But when I trained in therapy, um, I started talking to him and asking him questions. And he needed people to, uh, someone to ask him questions in order to talk more openly, I think, about himself. So I got close to him over that period of time. And I can remember him saying at one stage that he felt like he was closer to me than any of my brothers. But that was at a particular point in time. And... Um, he asked me once to supervise a videotape of his that he'd done, a counselling videotape. 
and I think that was a big turning point in my relationship with him, basically, because he showed that he was respecting me on a professional level by asking mm -hmm. me. And not only that, when I saw it, I was dreadfully embarrassed because he was counselling a couple and he was totally ignoring the woman. <laughs> <laughs> when I pointed that out, he didn't just dismiss it. He said, oh, yes, I really can see that now and um, mm -hmm. took my advice and and that meant a lot to me and yeah it did shift the whole of our relationship I think so. I caught the train up to um, Harpenden and Mike met me on the train we took her home and I was quite very shy but I know how to talk so I just <laughs> talked and talked, probably a load of rubbish, and they were lovely to me. And I remember that Mike's father went up to him after to put his arm around him and said, you've got a cracker there. <laughs> it was really nice. Jazzy, mm -hmm. what do you remember about Grampy? Uh, he used to tell lots of stories. He used to tell lots of stories to you. What sort of stories? Um, about him. About him? What about him? <laughs> well, I knew him better than anyone, of course. Because I argued with him longer than anyone else. <laughs> I had more time. All the others had other children to distract them. I was there on my own with him, telling him that he should give a damn that I was out till three in the morning and fornicating hopelessly everywhere. And... Just tell us what you remember about Grumpy. What, 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 what do you remember most about Grumpy? Uh, playing golf. And picking tomatoes. Playing golf and picking tomatoes. He was very handsome. And of course he looked rather smashing in uniform. <laughs> which helped, I suppose. <laughs> so So how 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 did it proceed from hand holding to proposal? What were the were there many steps in between? Well, quite a few, but he asked permission from my father whether he could propose to me. And my father said, I'd be delighted to have you as a son-in-law, but I think she's too young. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think you'll have to wait for a while. And how long did he wait? Well, after he was shot down and taken prisoner, and then got back finally, they gave way completely. Mm. He gave way completely and arranged a special license and married us so so do you think do you think there's any secret to having a good an excellent 64 year marriage or is it is it just a, a case of different times it may be it's partly times have changed a lot i suppose but, uh, and it was hard, quite hard work, really. But he was, he was wonderful in always uh, saying how he loved me. That was mm. nearly every day in one way or another. And uh, he said he loved me and I did the same. And he's always said that that's the secret. And when he, well, when I've seen one. him, when I've seen him officiate weddings, that was yes. always he, yes, he did what say he that. insisted. Yes, he did. But it certainly certainly made a difference, I feel. Mm. And then you've got to be you want to be committed. Absolutely, I think I think a lot of people <laughs> just have think they have too easy an escape hatch, and then they. Yeah. They also don't realize the going will get tough at some points. It got very tough sometimes, but <laughs> you just had to work through it. That's what we felt, we worked through it. And you did, and you guys always seemed as much in love in recent years as ever. <laughs> I'm, glad it, I'm glad it seemed like that. <laughs> no, I... I rem it was true. <laughs> Isn't there? 